worshipped and gave gifts. Matthew 2 and verse number 11 says, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Heavenly Father, bless your word tonight. As you have blessed, O God, our singing, may you give strength and power to your servant right now. Speak to our hearts this evening, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child. Now they traveled quite far. I think it is wrong to be able to uh, say that the wise men were with the shepherds when they visited Christ. Nung ang mga shepherds ay binisita ang ating Panginoon, He was just a newly born baby. Pero mga wise men, nung sila ay nakarating sa Bethlehem, o oh, maaring hindi na roon sa dati, of course, sabi ng Bible, it is no longer a uh, place for animal but it's now a house, isn't it? So therefore, I would think that Christ was around six to one year old when they were able to uh, come and visit him. It says right here, and when they were coming to the house, sila ay napunta roon sa bahay, Hindi na doon sa, uh, ano tawag doon? Ha? Ah? Saan? Hindi yung manger, yung ano yun eh, yung sabsaban yun eh. Ha? Ah? Stable. They were no longer in the stable. They were now in the house. They saw the young child, not anymore the baby, but the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Joseph was not even mentioned. He might not have been there. He might be somewhere working but he was not there. And worship him and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts Three gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And these three gifts have representations. They are types. Like gold is the type of deity because Christ is the Son of God. Understand that? Deity means Christ is God. Like frankincense is the type of a man. Because Christ became a man. And mere is the type of suffering. Because Christ suffered for us. So, yung kailimutan itong typology yung ginamit dito. Alright? Ang una gold. Okay? The type of Christ being what? God. Frankincense. Type of Christ being a man. And the Bible says that when he was baptized by John... The Lord, the God said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well, what? Pleased. Okay, frankincense is something that uh, gives favor. Favor. 
It is an incense that has a very sweet smelling smell. And usually the word frankincense is used and they have incense that serve as a smoke. It fills the house. It means the favor of God. When Christ became a man, he had the favor of God. And then Mir speaks of what? Suffering. Mir speaks of suffering. These are very, very important gifts that those Magi or those wise men gave. Let me just tell you about three things or four things about this wise man. First of all, let us look at the predicament of their coming. The predicament of their coming. Tonight, I am going to put two messages into one. I would even think about three messages and make it into one. And this is the first. The predicament of their coming. Matthew 2, 1 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. Now, from the east to Jerusalem. It must have been Arabia. And it would be directly from the northeast, it would be Syria. If it would be directly from the east, it would be Arabia. Okay? Or Iran. Or somewhere there. It was not an easy travel. You reckon? Yes. Hindi po ito madaling paglakbay. Walang asakyan ng araw except camels. And when I was in Dubai one day, I took one of those camels. I remember riding in one and the camel didn't want me to ride on his back because at that time I was very big. Nung yan, I weighed 250 pounds. I look at me now, I weigh 197 pounds today. Now imagine I weighed 250 pounds at the time. I'm big. I'm not fat. I'm big. <laughs> and so, my family and I were in Dubai that day and we tried to ride a camel. So, no kawanan sa ng camel, ayo tumayo ng camel. Kasi nakaupo siya eh. Hindi ka beso makai pa nakatayo siya. Mataas eh. Alright. So kinakailan maupo ng camel, pinaupo ng nag-aalaga ng camel, at ako ay pumupo. Habang siya ay nakaupo. Nung pinapatayo na siya, nung nag-aalaga sa kanya, ay tumayo. And laki ko ba naman eh. Ay tumayo. Alright. Nung siya ay tatayo na, ang sabi ng camel, <coughs> The bigot ko. You know? You know, it was an easy ride. I don't know. How many of you have tried to ride a camel? Siguro mas madali yung camel na mayroon dalawang hands back, di ba? Pero yung isa lang na ganyan, yung usually ganun. Mahirap sa canyon eh. Oh, Mas madali doon sa camel kung doon ka sa liig sumakay. <laughs> Pero kung doon mismo doon sa hands back na yan, Mahirap. Sumakay. Now, let, let me imagine for a while here. Okay? Yung mga wise men, when they were traveling from the east to go to Jerusalem. Now look at this. In order for them to be able to worship the Lord personally, they have to sacrifice. You know that? No na ba? bako? Para sila ay sumamba sa Panginoon, kinakailangan na lang Pero ngayon, ginagawa, na, ginagawa natin convenient na pagsamba. Am I right? 
Ginagawa natin very convenient and very comfortable. Kinakailangan magandang upuan, kinakailangan may aircon, kinakailangan ganito lahat. We give all the comfort. Pero noong una, wala. Today, it is sad na hindi alam ng marami mga anak ng Diyos ang magsakripisyo. Tama ba ako? Hindi alam. Kung sa'yo nagkasakripisyo, dahil ang sila'y mahirap. At hindi kasalanan ng Panginoon yun. Di ba? Pero pinag-uusapan ng pagsamba ay hindi na alam ng mga anak ng Diyos ang pagsakripisyo. Pag malayo, malayo ang bahay namin, may hirapan ako. So hindi ko asamba. Hindi na, di, di na complain ang mga wise men na ganyan na malayo ang pinanggalingan namin. Why? Because they were excited to see the King of Kings. They were excited. They would love to see Him. Kaya gusto ko makita nyo ang predicament ng kanilang pagdating. Ito hindi madaling paglalakbay. Mahirap. They were actually traveling in the desert. Tayo mga Pilipino, hindi po natin alam ang disyerto. Dito sa ating sa Pilipinas, wala naman tayong four, four seasons dito. Di ba? Oo. Ang season natin dito, ano? Dalawa lang ang ating season dito. Ano yung dalawang season natin? Ha? Ha? Oh, the, on the dry and the wet. The hot and the very hot. Yan, dalawang season natin dito. The hot and the very hot. We do not know about the four seasons. Mm-hmm. So sila ay inabot ng winter siguro, inabot ng summer, inabot ng, inabot ng spring, inabot ng autumn. Yan ang sabi ni James Taylor. Winter, spring, summer and fall. Winter, spring, summer and fall. Di ba? Sabi ni James Taylor? Oh. <laughs> okay. Yun, ang pinanggalingan nilang season. They traveled. It was not easy. Alam niyo ba na napakalambing ngayon sa Amerika? Nakikita ninyo sobra ang lamig sa Amerika. Alright? And for the very first time, ang kanilang mga pipes burst. Frozen pipes. Hindi naman lumalabig na ganyan sa disyerto, pero pag winter, malamig din naman. Kayo mga uh, nagtabaho sa Middle East, alam nyo, ang ibig sabihin niya. Kaya gusto ko ma-imagine ninyo ang hirap na ginampanan ng mga wise men na ito upang sila lamang ay sumamba sa Panginoon at magbigay ng kanilang offerings. Amen po ba? Sana sa mga comfort at convenience na binibigay ng Panginoon sa atin, we learn to sacrifice also. Am I right? We learn to sacrifice the predicament of their coming. Number two, the difficulty of their worship. The difficulty of their worship. Nagtatravel sila sa pagka sila mga pantas at ang mga pantas na ito ay mga advisors ng mga hari. They went to see King Herod. Di alam, itong si Herod pala will not take the announcement gladly. Ah, ganun ba? Mayroon na palang haring papalit sa akin, sa akin saka sa anak ko. So, Herod deceived them. And they were threatened by a wicked and jealous king. Mm, the difficulty of their worship. Listen, listen here, brethren. Kung walang sacrifice sa worship, it's not worship. Hello? Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. If there's no sacrifice and worship, it's not worship. It's just like this, folks. If there is no sacrifice in love, there's no love. Because love sacrifices. The very essence of love is to sacrifice. You don't sacrifice, you don't love. You know what? Love, when God said, I love you, He gave His life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Nung sinabi ng Panginoon, mahal kita, binigay niya ang buhay niya. Mm-hmm. Pagkami sa iniisip natin, 
Well, you know, you give a little, and that's already being in love. Sinasabi ko nga sa mga takakabite kaninang umaga at nung isang gabi, na kung talaga tayo umiibig, o umiibig tayo, for example, like, ikaw ay isang lalaki, iniibig mo yung isang babae, you will sacrifice. I mean, you'll do everything to be able to show her that you love her. Am I right? You're gonna spend to show her that you love her. Tama ba ako, mga kapatid? I mean, kung talaga mahal mo ang isang babae, o, oh, nanunuyo ka at nanuturoan ka mga binata rito, All right, Julie boy. Nuturuan kita ang anong gagawin mo. Oh, asan si Saldi? Saldi, alam nyo, itong mga ito, paborito ko itong i-mention eh. Mention eh. Kung gagawa ang Panginoon ng Bible ngayon, yung dalawang ito, nakamayon sa Bible yan. All right? So yung mga binato, nuturuan ko na. Hindi ka pwedeng umibig kung hindi ka marunong magsakripisyo. Am I right? Hindi pwede pag birthday nung iyong iniibig, eh pupunta ka sa National Bookstore. Di ba? Sabi ko sa kanila yan eh. Oo. Amimili ka ng magandang birthday card. At nakita mo, mahal pala yung mga birthday card. So, ano yung hinahanap mo? Yung pinakamura. Yung pinakamurang birthday card. Meron ba bang, tayo mo pa yung ano, yung cashier. Meron po bang birthday card dun sampung piso lang? And you say you love. Am I right? Eh, wala kang makita ang birthday card ng ganun kamura. So, anong ginawa mo? Gagawa na lang ako ng birthday card. Mas maganda yung ginagawa kasi binibili. Uy! Talaga? Di ba? So, listen. When you love someone, you give the best that someone. Amen. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Oh. You know, I love my wife. I don't tell that to her every day. But you know, I gave her a gold watch. I gave her a gold Rolex watch. Ayan naman yung isuot. Bakit? Baka ma-hold up siya. So, ibibenta na lang niya. Alright? You know what I'm saying? Amen ba? Oo. Hindi siya binigyan ng watch na galing sa Green Hills. See, when you love, you make a sacrifice. There's always a price to pay when you love. Amen? Now, I love this church since I started it in 75. And I want to pay the price. And I paid the price for 45 years for this ministry and for this church. I can show you, my, I can show you half of my body and you're going to see the price I paid. And many other things that you don't know about. But there's always a price to pay when you love. You see, when Jesus loved us, He paid the price. Amen? When Jesus loved you, He paid the price. And what was the price? His life. He gave His life on the cross. All right. Now take all of that. The difficulty of their worship. And then thirdly, we have the joy of giving. The joy of giving. In verse number 10 of Matthew chapter 2, when they saw the star, they what? They what? They what? They rejoice. They rejoice with exceeding great joy. Now can you imagine? Pagod na pagod sila sa pag-travel. Am I right? Naglakad sila. Sumakay sa kamelyo, naglakad ng, ng, ng gabi, hindi sila pwede mag-travel ng araw. Bakit? Because they won't see the star. Am I right? So they have to travel all night. All night. Oh. Because if they travel the daytime, they won't see the star. I do not know how many days they travel. We don't know how many months they travel. But they travel far. Pero alam nyo, when they saw the star, hindi pa nakikita ang Panginoon, ha? Yung star pa lang, eh. Anong sabi ng Bible? They rejoice with exceeding great joy. Because the star tells them, Jesus is there. Amen? The star tells them, Christ is there. They rejoice with exceeding great joy. Yan ay tulad dyan ng isang nanay na naglelabor. Kung mga anak na siya, di ba? I mean, it is not easy to labor. 
Not because I experienced it. <laughs> You're suppo that's supposed to be funny, folks. You know, death, that's supposed to be funny. See how that more than one half of this crowd don't even understand what I'm trying to say? You know that? Huh? Just imagine. More than one half of this crowd don't even understand what am I trying to say? You're supposed to laugh. You know, sometimes a pastor would kick in something like that for him to know if you're listening. Know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Almost half of you are not. You see? So, yung nagle-labor na nanay, na mga anak na, hindi siya natutuwa eh. Am I right? Ha? Huh? Nakikita ba kayo nung nanay na umiire at ang sabi, sabi ng doktor? Anong sabi ng doktor? Ha? Huh? Umiire ka, di ba? Yung... Ang tag doon? Ano sabi ng doktor? Ha? Huh? Push! How do you push? Alam nga naman, nakakita ka nanay. Ang sabi ng doktor, push. Ang sabi ng nanay, <laughs> Di ba? Anong ba ginawa mo, Elsa? Nung nanganak ka, sabi ng doktor, push. Ang sabi nyo, <laughs> Ganun ba? Hey, listen, mothers. You don't, you don't, Alam niyo kaya kayo tumawa? Yung gumunod ako eh. <laughs> Yan lang ang tawa niyo. Hindi kayo tumatawa lang sa sarita ko. You just do not know the hardship of a mother when she gives birth to a child. Amen? You just don't know, folks. You just don't know that when apag ang nanay po ay nagkakare ng kanyang anak, She's not only affected physically, she's affected emotionally. Emotionally, physically, mentally she's affected. You don't realize that. The hardship is not only physical, it is emotional also. Do you realize that? Amen, mothers? Amen. It is. That's true. I experienced that. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, ha? Huh? I have begotten you in my bonds. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, balagay nyo, siguro natanong nyo, when I said I experienced that, bibiro ako. Pero sabi ni Apostle Paul, kayo pinanganak ko sa aking kahirapan. Lahat kayo rito sa church na to, pinanganak kayo ni Bene Abante sa kahirapan. Do you realize that? I labored by the grace of God. I labored for all of you. Mahirap. Pero alam nyo, kapag pinanganak na yung kanyang anak, amen ba? Ano nangyayari? Nakakalimutan niya yung pinagdaanan niyang hirap eh. Amen ba? Kahit, especially kung kamukha niya anak niya. I mean, masayang masaya yan eh. Talagang, uy, kamukha ako. Pag kamukha ng asawa niya, <laughs> bakit? Pero alam nyo, kahit na anong itsura ng anak mo, kahit na ano yan, pinagirapan mo yan, pag lumabas yan, mautuwa ka. Na look, tinan nyo ang hirap na pinagdaanan ng mga wise men when they saw the star. The joy of giving. Joy, happiness, and blessedness many times are translated out of the same Greek word. Ano ba yan? Yung joy, yung happiness, yung blessedness, many times are translated out of the same Greek word. Then, number four, the value of their gifts. Ang value ng kanilang mga regalo. May value ba yan? Oh yes. They gave gold, and that's the, more, the most valuable metal, di ba? During that time, they gave frankincense, they gave myrrh, 
<coughs> this gifts were worthy of a king. This gifts were worthy of a king. How much value is your gift? Does God value your gift? Hmm? You know, the wise man is a picture of a believer in Christ. Ang mga wise men po ay larawan ng mga mananampartaya, ng mga anak ng Diyos. Hindi madali na sumamba. O madaling mananampalataya. Tayo ay naligtas sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya. Pero pagkatapos ng ating pagkakaligtas at wala tayong binayaran dyan, am I right? Hindi ibig sabihin ay hindi na tayo, lahat ng bagay magiging madali. Ang mga reliyosong tao ay kinakailangan maghirap para maligtas. Tayo hindi. Am I right? <coughs> Yung inahanap ng mga milyon-milyon tao ron, sa kaya po, kaligtasan. Do you realize that? They were looking for salvation. And they were willing even to get their, their, their handkerchiefs or their towels, all right, na mapunasan ang muka ng Black Nazareth. Because they thought that's salvation. Lumalakad sila, nagsisiksikan, hanggang may stampi dyan, hanggang may masaktan dyan, and they don't really care, they don't really mind being that. Do you know why? Do you know why? They're looking for salvation. But hey, you did not do that to be saved. Amen? Amen? You did not carry the cross to be saved. Jesus did that. Amen. You did not walk so far to be saved. Jesus did that. You were not nailed to the cross to be saved. Jesus did that. You didn't have to put a crown of thorns on your head. Jesus did that. Jesus did all the sufferings. Jesus did all the agony that you and I might be saved. Anong ginawa natin para maligtas? We just trusted Him. We just opened our hearts to Him and believed in Him. Amen? Yeah. Now look, after that, what do we have? After we get saved, do you think it becomes so easy? No. No. All right? We did not do anything that we might have heaven. But hey, while we are traveling down here to go to heaven, we're going to have a hard time. Amen? Now you can read the Bible. You can read the sufferings of those great men. You can read them from Abraham. You can read chapter 11 of Hebrews. Magkikita nyo ng paghihirap ng mga anak ng Diyos upang ang gospel ay may bahagi sa atin lahat. Am I right? They suffered. They were beaten to death. They were even crucified upside down for, for Jesus Christ. Nakikinig ba kayo sa akin? Narikilas nyo ba ito, mga kapatid? Ha? Alright. So kung gusto nang sabi nyo, ano, na madali lang ito eh. No, it's not easy. Para kung inaawit yung awiting, it's not an easy road. Di ba? It's not an easy road. As we travel to heaven, for many are the thorns of the way. Am I right? Ano yun? Anong, anong awiting yun? Oh, anong awiting yun? Ha? Huh? Di ba? It's not an easy road. Pwede ang, ang title no? As we travel to heaven, for many are the thorns on the way. Not an easy road, but the Savior is with us. Amen? Kaya nagiging madali ang daan sapagkat nasa atin ng Panginoon. Oh, See? We're going to be tried. 
we're going to suffer too. We are going to experience all kinds of experiences in life as we travel with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not easy. You see? And don't you ever think it should be easy. Kami san, hinahanap natin ang madaling daan. Naghanap tayo ng shortcut sa lahat ng bagay. Pagkamisan, nais natin makalusot sa faithfulness. Pagkamisan, sino shortcut natin ng katapatan? There's no shortcut to faithfulness. Do you realize that? Now, don't forget what I said. I said it. There's no shortcut to faithfulness. Let me repeat that. And you can write it down. There is no shortcut to faithfulness. None. So many times, pag pinag-usapan natin ang pag-ibigay ng ating buhay, nais natin madali. Pag-ibigay ng ating offerings, nais natin out only of our abundance. Pag marami, we can give. Pagkakaunti, we will not give. Pagkailangan ko ang pera, I'm not going to give to God. Sa araw, meron tayong isang member na kinausap ng isang worker na isang church dito. Baptist Church. Bakit ang pastor nyo, binibigyan nyo pa yan ng kotse? Mataas ang support ninyo. Samantalang meron na yan kaya. Hindi naman mahirap yan. May kaya na yan. Ba't kinakailang bigyan niyo pa? Yun yung utak na marami mga tao na kinakailangan pag tinawag ka ng Panginoon, maghilap ka ng buong buhay mo. Hmm. Ang sagot dito, ganyan. Bakit ba, ba, ba tayo nabibigay sa Panginoon? Mayaman naman siya. Tama ba ako? Madagibigay tayo ng offering. Mayaman naman siya eh. Kailangan niya ba yan? Kanya. Tayo kanya. Ang buong universe kanya. Am I right? Mayaman siya eh. Pero bakit nangyibigay ng offering? Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Hindi sapagkat kailangan ko ang gift. No. So balit nais ko na yung pagpapahala ng Panginoon, yung bunga ay mapasay nyo. When you give. Because that's the only way. And that is the law that has been set before us. Oh, you see? And because of this, we have put up. I, res I searched the scriptures. Kaya sabi ko, look ah, I stood on my ground when I started. I stood on my ground that if God called me to preach here in this country, that I would not need any support outside because I know God can give me that. I stood that ground. Kaya nagsimula ako ng gawain dito, I could have asked support men. Marami ko kinala ng churches dito. Pero hindi ako nagpunta dyan at kumuha ng support. Tanin niyo si Bada Baliega. Sa kanya ko kinuha ang authority ng church na ito. All right? Noon tayo ay mission. I got the authority from Blue Ridge Bible Baptist Church. Did Baliega support me in any single centavo? None. Walang naibigay sa akin yung kahit singko. Tut ako pa nabibigay sa kanya eh. Yung anak niya, nagibigay sa kanya. I never received anything from him. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to set it against him, folks. I just praise the Lord that God has given me enough grace and faith to be able to stand on my ground. I stood. And I'm still standing today. Perhaps only a few pastors would have that kind of a faith. And I do not know why I had that faith. You know? I also was weak at that time. I don't have that strength. 
But God gave me the faith to stand on my ground. I want to build this church with God's people who will support all the ministries of the church that I'm going to build. And by the grace of God, we did it. But you know what? I have to look into the Word of God. I have to suffer. Kinakailangan mahirap ako. Kinakailangan tumindig ako. Kinakailangan pakinggan ko lahat ng mga criticism ng mga pastor din na katulad ko. Kinakailangan maranasan ko, alin, yung mga pasaring, yung mga masakit na mga salita, yung mga lahat ng klaseng mga, na mga salitang hindi ko maaari marinig sa mga pastor, narinig ko yan. Napakinggan ko yan. Tiniis ko yan. Hindi lamang yung mga kasakitan. Hindi lamang yung mga pagkakataon na wala kang makain. Yung mga pagkakataon na walang wala ka. Hindi mo wala ako sa uubunta. But I stood my ground. Hindi ako humingi kahit kanino. And God somehow blessed that. Oh. You see? Nung nagsimula ako dito, ng walong tao lamang, walong estudyante at mag-asawa, anong sabi ng mga pastor sa kanilang mga misyonari sa akin? I was only about what? 23 years old? Nung ako nagsimula ng aking church. I started preaching when I was 16, pero alam nyo, nung 16 years old ako, ako ang darling ng maraming churches. Ako ang leader ng pinakamalaking young people, Baptist young people sa buong Pilipinas, tatlong daan. Daling ako ng mga churches. I was a very good song leader at that time. Niimbitahan ako sa malalaking churches just to lead singing, not to preach, huh? just to lead singing. Oh. When I would go to the camp, youth camp, nung araw, ako palaging bida. Kaya naging mayabang ako eh. Naging sobrang yabang ko, the Lord has to put me down. God has to humiliate me and tell me, hey, you cannot go and serve me and be proud. He told me that by my experiences. You cannot go and serve me and be proud. And God humiliated me. God put me down. But at that time, I was the darling of the crowd. I was liked by everybody. You know? And because of that, Almost all churches would like to get me. Huh? Mga missionary would like to take me in. One day I was in Baguio. Ako ang nag-establish ng choir sa Baguio. Ako ang nagliligin leader ng mga young people doon. At that time, uh, usong-uso nung araw yung Jesus Christ Superstar na opera by Rice and Weber. Kami ang nag-protest dyan. nag kami sa Baguio against Jesus Christ Superstar showing. All right? I had all my young people with me in Baguio. I was there for several weeks. I established the young people's department. I established the choir. And after that, I said to the missionary, Ben, I would like to get your son to be my associate. Mm. So the missionary talked to me and said, I told your father already. I was only about what, 18 years old? Sabi niya sa akin, I'm going to get you to be my youth director and choir director in our church. Anong sabi ko sa kanya? I'm sorry. I don't want it. Akala niya, mayabang ako eh. Di ba? Pero alam niya, wala kang magagawa pag tumutubo na yung nationalism sa puso mo eh. I don't like. I don't want it. Oo, nagsumpo sa tatay ko. Sabi sa tatay ko, Ben! Your son does not want to work with me. Why don't you tell him to work with me? Can you imagine that? Ano sabi ng father ko? Well, you've got to convince my son. He is old enough to make a decision on his own. Uh-oh. I had my chances. Oh, maybe you don't know this. Nung ako po ay naging pastor dito, nagkaroon ako ng malaking problema at that time. All right, I was starting this work, and it was only about what, two weeks or three weeks? I had two scholarships in the States. 
two scholarships in America. Okay? I received affidavit of support left and right by friend, from friends. They will take care of me. They'll give me housing. They'll give me allowances. You know what I said? No. God has called me to start MBBC. I will establish MBBC. I refuse to go to America. Oh, meron ka ilang pastor ang tatanggi sa Amerika? May mga pastor pumupunta sa Amerika for scholarship purposes? No. Not scholarship. My goodness. If I went there for a scholarship, I have a doctor, doctor, doctor degree. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I would not even know you. And this work will not be established. But you know, looking back, 38 years ago, I praised God. I said no. Amen. You know that? Amen. Because if I said no, I would not meet the most wonderful people in the world. And that's you. Amen. That's right. Even if some of you don't seem like wonderful. I would not have any fellowship with you at all. I hindi ko sinasabi itong kwento to every time. But that was my story, folks. And I praise God I stayed. Hmm. See? So, I have to look into the Word of God and research sa Bible. Sabi ko, palagay ko, meron sa Bible talaga yung answer. Para yung mga churches natin lumago at maging resourceful, maging resilient. Ah, yumaman sa gawain ng Panginoon, magawin lahat ng resources para magawa niya lahat ng mga ministries. You know what I'm saying? And exactly, when I begin to search the Bible, it was, it's there. It's there. That's why I was able to what? I was able to write these two books right here. I was able to write this cheerful giving book. I was able to write this cheerful giving book part two. See? This is a 25-year-old research from the Bible. 25 years old. Research on this. Because I know the Bible has the answer. Amen? The American churches is not the answer. The Bible is the answer. Amen? Oh. I mean, I'm teaching you right now. So many times, pala, binapalagay natin na kinakailangan pumunta ko ng abroad para ko yumaman. Let them tell you this. If God wants to bless you, He can bless you even in the most poorest part of the world. He can bless you. Do you realize that? He can bless you. Kahit nasa mahirap kan lugar, kahit nasa mahirap kang bansa, pagpapalain ka ng Panginoon, the economy, regardless, why? Because economy of the world does not rule God. God rules economy. Amen. Ana, lahat kayo mga members natin, maging katulad ng pastor niyo sa kanyang sa kanya taya, stand. Sa kanyang kanakatayuan. I, I, I've had my chance, folks. Malala ko, when I went to the States one time, they liked me there when I was preaching. And Kamamatay lang ng pastor nila. And the treasurer, who is a very good friend of mine, said, Pastor, would you come to our church and pastor it? And that is situated in a state in America. The state of Connecticut. Huh? By GNP folks, is the richest state in the U.S. Do you realize that? Ang pinag-usapan yung sweldo ron, mas mataas ang sweldo na rank and file sa Connecticut kaysa sa New York. Ibig sabihin, doon sa Connecticut, walang mahirap doon. Wala. And I'm being asked to pastor it. Can you imagine, iiwan ako doon sa to? When was that? I think it was in 1983 or 85 when they called me, when they tried to ask me, why don't you come and pass this church? What do you want? 
Oh. Biniri ko, biniro ko, sabi ko, well, I need a place to live in. Wala akong place to live in dito. I would be speaking there ne uh, one week later, ano mo ginawa nila? Bumili ng bahay. A five-bedroom house. Then, inimbitahan ako. Pinakita sa akin. This will be your house. We're gonna give you a car and you can change it anytime you want to. If you want me to add, if you would like to add more acreage in this property, sumundagdagan niya ng lot, dadagan natin yan. Gusto mo paggawa ng building na mas malaki? Let's build a building. Mas malaki. Then, binilo ko ulit, I want to risk New York. I will not pass to this church if we will not risk New York. We're going to risk New York. Now, it is so easy in 1985 that I can have support as, as much as $8,000 a month in 1985. Just preaching three times a week. Living off. Living great. Playing golf. Everything like this. Nakikinig ba kayo sa akin? Hmm. Mga kapatid, tinanggihan ko yun eh. Tinanggihan ko yun for this church. Now many of you here don't know what I have gone through. And many of you have been here, siguro mga 5 or 10 years ago, you think na mayaman tong church na ito, mayaman tong pastor na ito, hindi dumaan sa hirap to. Dumaan ako sa hirap, sa pinakamay hirap na tao rito sa, sa church na ito. I passed that way. And God has blessed this church in a wonderful way. Doon ko nakita ang giving. Doon ko nalaman kung paano pagpapalain ng Panginoon ng isang church. At ang problema rito, kahit na yung mga matagal ng member ng Baptist churches, hanggang ngayon ha, they do not understand what giving means. And they're not doing it. You know, looking at the four areas of cheerful giving, for example. <coughs> that the Lord gave me. Sabi ko, a lot of misconceptions have come when we talk about giving. The tithe is a glaring example. Yung tithe lang. Huh? Some have construed it to be a New Testament giving, depriving churches of the blessings of God. Many believers are so satisfied with tithing, thinking that they are really giving. In the U.S., Giving conferences have become so professional that it has become commercialized. Alam niyo ba, pag meron silang giving conference doon, pag meron silang tinatawag na financial conference, alam mo kung sino yung kanilang iniibitang speaker? Not really a pastor, but a financial consultant. A financial consultant with a master's degree and ganitong ganito. And they have to pay him. They have to pay him big amount of money. Can you imagine that? Mm. It's still, it's still, people don't learn to give. Why? Because they're getting professionals who do not even preach like they ought to preach, empowered by the Holy Spirit. They're just professionals trying to teach professionals that if they will give, they're going to receive this kind of investment. And they're going to have a lot of dividends. That's what they think of. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh. And that's what they're doing now. Pastors have to conduct a giving conference in a more pleasant and convenient way so as not to offend the so sensitive Christians who are more often in debt and therefore they cannot honor God with their giving. 
I'd like to call them insensitive to biblical giving. I don't know, huh? I, I, you know, there are about, why, five, six million Filipinos in the U.S.? Most of them are in debt. Alam niyo ba yung ibig sabihin nun? Karamihan sa kanila, malaki pagkakautang. Lahat yan utang. Nakala natin, pag nagpunta ang kamang-anak natin galing sa Amerika, maraming pera yan. Hindi mo alam, ang pinambayad niyan sa kanyang airfare, American Express Card, Di ba? Eh kaso kasi, kasalanan din ng mga Pilipino-Americans eh. Oo. Mapapakuha ng picture dun sa kanyang kotse. Ah, ganyan pa sa kotse niya. Sports car. Mustang, Camaro, things like this, di ba? Oh, ganda ng kotse ng ano ko, mga pamangking ko. Ang ganda ng kotse ng anak ko. Hoy, utang yun. Hindi niya kayang bilhin yun. Makano lang ang sweldo nun? You think that in the States, if you're earning $8,000, that you are well off, folks? $8,000 today is what? It's a poor man's salary in America. Why? Because you spend dollars, you don't spend pesos. Do you realize what I'm saying? Dito, malaki yun. Sa Amerika, hindi. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? I'm not trying to tell you na Huwag na kayong pumunta doon. So nasabi ko lang siya, mag-isip kayo. Kasi kung iniisip ninyo na langit ang Amerika, may langit ako eh. Ito, itong Pilipinas na ito, mga kabatid, kahit sabihin natin mahirap ito, nasa Panginoon ako, pinagpapala ako nito, langit sa akin to. How many times did my brother Hernes file bankruptcy? Kakita ka ng mga kamag-anak nating mga, mga Pilipinos sa States na magpapakuha ng picture sa kanilang bahay. Laki ng bahay, di ba? Kuha ng picture, ganyan pa. Utang yun. 30 years to pay yun. Ngayon, meron ngayon sa Amerika na pwede kang kumuha ng lahat ng appliances ngayon, ha? You can get all the appliances without paying anything and you're gonna start paying in July. Can you imagine? Eh di maano ka, di ba? Maingganyo ka. Can you imagine? Kukuha ka ng lahat ngayon ng appliances. Sa July kang babayad. First installment. Mauuso na ngayon dito yan. Nandiyan ba yan? Ayaw ko, uuso na dito yan. And because of that, they're not able to live accordingly. Palagi silang stressed out. You know? Wala silang peace sa kanilang mga puso. I'm not saying that all of them are like that. But many of them are. Meron akong isang kaibigan. Nasa langit na siya ngayon. So malangit na wa. <coughs> kaibigan ko yan. CPA yan sa Pilipinas. Cum laude yan. Nung nag-graduate. Board of Nature yan. Magaling na CPA. Mm. Maganda ang position dito. Nagasawa siya ng Filipino-American sa state. Minahal niya. Kaya kinakaila pumunta siya ron. So when he went there, anong trabaho niya? CPA kagad, no? Insurance agent. After so many years, he became an adjuster in an insurance company. Doon na lang siya. Doon na siya naipit. Doon na siya sa lahat. Until one day, his boss told him, Well, I need to fire one of you two in this company. But you see, I cannot fire the other one because he is white. You're brown, so I'm going to fire you. No, 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 no. You're Filipino, so I'm going to fire you. Kala niyo ba, wala pa ngayon hanggang ngayon, 
discrimination to America. He was fired out. Nalungkot siya, na-depress siya, wala na siyang trabaho, at wala na siyang gana magtrabaho. Ang ganda na CPA niya. So, anong ginawa niya? Total, mayroon naman akong unemployment benefit. So, he didn't work anymore. He just lived on unemployment benefit, which is about one half of your salary. Siguro, nag-sweldo siya ng mga three to four thousand dollars at that time. Unemployment siya at that time. It was about 1990s. Oh, tinabanda siya magtrabaho after one year. Pagkatapos ng one year, wala ka pang trabaho. Oh, ano ka na? Nasa welfare, welfare system ka na. Oh, from an employment uh, benefit to a welfare system. Kaya natanggap na lang niya, $700 a month. Anong kinukuha niya? Pag kumukuha siya ng welfare salary, welfare income, kalahati non cash, kalahati food stamps. Alam niyo yung food stamps? One day, nag-grocery kami. O, oh, bagong-bago kong punta ron, nag-grocery kami. Sabi sa akin, Sige Ben, kuha ka ng gusto mo. So, ako naman, siyempre, Amerika siya, Pilipino ako eh. May herb lang ako noon, di ba? Ikuha ko ng Levi's, kuha ko ng ganito. Babayad ng kami roon sa cashier, ang binayad niya, food stamps. Alam niyo ba, nakatingin sa amin lahat ang mga Amerikano? At nakaka-insultong tingin nila? Why? Because they were saying, that's my taxes. That's my money that you're using. That friend of mine died and went to heaven like that, folks. Maganda ka sakit siya. Listen, huwag tayong tumingin doon kung saan ang maganda ekonomiya eh. Tumingin tayo sa Panginoon sa pagka siya may pinakamagandang ekonomiya. Amen, Amen ba? Amen. Oh. See? Sa New Testament, alam yung lahat to eh. At binibigay ko palagi sa inyo. And many of you, you know what? Sabihin ko sa inyo, meron sa inyo rito, never learn these things. Palagi nyo narinig, but you never learn. You know that? You never learn. Many of you here still have a dull out mentality thing. Many of you still here look money as, old, as, the, as the answer for all. Nakakalungkot, pero ganun eh. Oh. The New Testament giving is not called tithing. New Testament giving should be called what? The grace of giving. Am I right? Yan ang tinuro ko sa inyo. Yan ang nakalagay sa 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9. Oo. Kaya pag tinanong ka, ano ba yung giving nyo sa church ninyo? Anong sagot nyo? The grace of giving. On the basis of 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9. And alam ko, na ito yung doktrina hindi madaling tanggapin. Especially kung naghihirap ka. Especially kung hindi mo alam yun. Especially kung matigas ang ulo mo. Especially kung talagang, you know, ha? kapit ka sa patalim. You will not like this message. Mahirap. Tanggapin. Hmm. Tinabi ko rito, a safe person can testify on the changes in his own life. Such as what? Quitting smoking, drinking, gambling, partying. But seldom will you hear him speak, since I got saved, I have learned to give cheerfully because the Lord gave His life to me and He became my example. Bihirang-bihira ka makakakita ng isang anak ng Diyos, magta-testimony sa atin, na ako'y naligtas, ang una na pag-aralan ko ay magbigay cheerfully sa Panginoon. Kaya pala ako binabang ito eh. Di ba? It's good for us to be able to tell people nung ako'y naligtas na wala lahat ang bisyo ko sa buhay. Na wala lahat siya mga yan. Pero ang sabihin ko sa inyo, maraming hindi ligtas na walang bisyo. Saan niyo ba yan? Ang mga Seventh-day Adventists, ang mga Sabadista, walang mga bisyo yan. Hindi mga ligtas yan. Wala kay Kristo yan. 
Pero wala sila mga bisyo. Pero alam niyo ba, ang pinaka malalim na pagbabago na ibinibigay ng Panginoon sa isang anak ng Diyos, maliban sa nawawala ng mga bisyo yan, when he learns to give cheerfully. Kapag napag-aralan niyang ibalik sa Panginoon lahat ng dapat niyang ibalik. Kaya nag-prepress ako sa Mandawe in 1982. Oh. Nabigay ako na example doon. May isang mayaman doon na may ayan ng barko. That was 82. Oh. Tinanong ko siya, nung bago ka naligtas, marami ka bang bisyo? O ba pastor? Nahinig arilyo ako, lahat nasa akin. Magkano ginagasta mo? Magkano ginagasta mo sa bisyo mo? Ha? Araw-araw, 9,000 a day. Ganun, kayaman yun. 9,000 a day. Alam nyo ba kung magkano nagagastos ng ilang kaibigan ko sa kasino? Araw-araw, milyon. 9,000 a day. Tinan ko siya ulit, save ka na ba? Yes, pastor. Binawa ko ba ng Panginoon? Yes. Nawala yung mga bisyo mo? Yes. E di nakatipid ka ng 9,000 a day. Correct? Nakatipid ka na ng 9,000 a day. Sabi niya, opo. Binibigay ko ba sa Panginoon yan ngayon? Napahiya siya. Napahiya siya. Aba, nakatipid ka na. Tinanggal ng Panginoon yung mga bisyo mo. Dapat yung nagagastos mo sa bisyo mo, binibigay mo sa Panginoon ngayon. Am I right? See? Oh. Tayo ba natututo? Hindi. We don't learn. Hindi ako dumaan sa kanyang buhay. Kaya hindi ko alam kung paano magkawin ng mga bisyo. You know, we, we become grossly engulfed in commercialism and materialism, which the devil wants us to be. Yun ang gusto ng Diablo. Maging engross tayo sa mga bagay komersyal. Engross tayo sa mga bagay ng mga tungkol sa pera. Doon tayo mag-spend. Trabaho. Lahat ng mga bagay na yan. Hindi ba yun ang temptation ng Panginoon? Di ba? Anong sabi ng Diablo sa Panginoon? When he was tempted. Sa Matthew chapter 4. Pinakita ng Diablo sa kanya lahat ng kingdom ng langit. At ang, ang kingdom ng lupa. Ang sabi ng Diablo, kung... kung, kung kung uh, sasambahin mo ako, bibigay ko sa iyo lahat. Itong kari, ano to? O, oh, ibig sabihin yan, ganito, may kapangyarihan ang jablong ibigay ang lahat ng bagay sa iyo. Hello? Sambahin mo lang siya. I promise you, may kapangyarihan ibigay ng jablo ang lahat na gusto mo. Sambahin mo lang siya. Kalimutan mo ang Diyos. Huwag kang maging faithful. Lahat yan, bibigay sa'yo. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Kung yun, in-offer niya sa Panginoon mismo eh. Sa atin pa kaya? Kaya sabi ko, kinakailangan ating mapag-aralan itong cheerful giving na ito. Sa lahat. Ano man ang kalagayan mo sa buhay. At tanggapin natin to na nanggaling sa Holy Spirit. Ito lang ang tanging paraan upang pagpalain ka. The only way to get blessed. Wala nang iba. That's why we welcome you to our Cheerful Giving Conference this week. A conference of blessings. Now look ha. So, let's talk about these four areas for a while. The tithe, for example. I-admit natin na tayong lahat are always used to getting than giving. Nung hindi ka pa baptist, hindi mo naman alam to eh, di ba? Yung tithe. Nung naging baptist ka at natuto ka, oh. In fact, nung naging anak ka ng Diyos at nabautismuhan ka. Nung narinig mo yung tithe, hindi mo maintindihan yan eh. Nahirapan ka pa eh. Tinatanong mo yung sarili mo eh. 10% ang laki naman nun. Di ba? 10% ang laki naman nun. 
O tinan mo nga kung magkano binabayaran mo taxes? Kung 10% lang? Hmm. Ang tunayan niyan, sabi ko nga, we're just plain selfish. It becomes so hard for us to give 10%. At alam ko, marami pa dito. Mamaya, magkikita nyo. Nakikita nyo yung mga blessing na yan, mga kapatid? These are tokens to be given to all cheerful givers. That is the strength of our church. Ipinapagita ko sa inyo to para malaman nyo ang strength ng church natin. At kung hindi ka sasama rito, you're not the strength of this church. To many of us, we have given more to the devil and to ourselves before we got saved. Many times we think the Lord is making it too hard for us to obey. Pero alam nyo, ang Panginoon, kapag siya ay nagsabi na instructions to give, He provide the blessing. Eh. <coughs> Do you believe that? Amen. <coughs> Tinan mo, Malakay 3.10. Yan na lang, simple, di ba? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring ye all the 10% into the storehouse. Tama ba yan? Bring ye all the what? The 10% into the storehouse. Saan ang storehouse? Sa church. Sana kausabi kayo ng Panginoon. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, say the Lord of hosts. Ano yung pangako niya? If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Nakita niyo ba yun? Hindi. Yung mga hindi nagtatay, hindi nakita yon. Ang nakita nyo, 10%! Ang laki naman yan! Member ka ng church na ito, magbigay ka! Kung ayaw mo, umalis ka dito! Naunawahan niyo ba ako? Do you hear me? Nakakainis na na taon-taon tuturo ko ng gano'n sa inyo, hindi kayo nakikinig. Hindi kayo natututo! Hindi na baling makita ko kayo sa ibang simbahan dyan. Kaysa andito kayo! And you're pulling us down by not giving. Palayan siya nasabi ko sa kabit siya nabi ito. Hindi pinag-uusapan dito yung amount eh. Hindi ba? Hindi pinag-uusapan yung amount. Ang pinag-uusapan kung tama. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Hindi yung amount. Hindi ka pwedeng mabigay ng kasing laki na binibigay ko eh. Am I right? It is not the amount. Ang pinag-uusapan dito, kung tama ang giving mo. Amen, Amen ba? Amen. Magkano ba ang 10% ng 1,000? 100, am I right? Magkano ang 10% ng 10,000? 1,000! Ano yung tama? 10% eh. Hindi pinag-uusapan yung amount. Iimun sabihin, yung 1,000 binigay niya, yun ang nabibigay ko. Hindi yun! Tanga mo pala eh. Naunawa niyo ba ako? Yeah. And you want me, you want me not to speak like this? Well, let me speak like this now. Mga pasaway ang ibang mga members ng church na ito. Hindi kita maaaring pilitin eh. Tama? Hindi kita maaaring pilitin dyan gawin mo. Pero hindi mo rin ako maaaring pigilan sabihin sa ito. Amen, Amen ba? Pulpito ko ito. Ako nagtayo ng church na ito. Hmm. Nakita mo lang yung type. Hindi mo nakita yung if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Saan nakita mo yun? Kasi pag nakikita mo yun, bibigay ka eh. Am I right? Okay pala yun eh. 
May blessing pa na dun eh. Hmm. Leviticus 27.30 And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is what? Is what? It's the Lord's. Okay, ha? Hindi lang yung fruit. Mula rin sa binhi. No, na ba, di ba ako? Mula sa pagkakatanim mo ng buto ng puno niyan hanggang sa bunga ng puno niyan. Sa Panginoon lahat yan. Ang lupa sa Panginoon niya. Amen ba? Ang tubig sa Panginoon niya. Ang sunlight sa Panginoon niya. Ang paglago niyan sa Panginoon niya. Ano ang sayo? It's the Lord's. Kinikilala ba natin yun? Oo. Oh. And it is holy. Holy ha? Kita nyo. Ano yung holy? Sanctified. Ano yung holy? Sanctified. Inihiwalay yan. Inihiwalay mo yan para sa Panginoon. Kaya pang ikaw tumanggap ng sweldo, ano bang profit, ano bang gana, ano bang income, inihiwalay mo kagad yung 10%. Sa Panginoon yan eh. Hindi yung Panginoon, marami kong gastusin eh. Abraham gave tithes. Bago pa yung batas, bago pa yung kaurusan ni Moses, he was giving tithes already. Sinabi natin that tithe is the legal requirement in the Old Testament. And not giving of it is to be guilty of stealing from the Lord. Malachi 3.8-9 Malino yan. Hindi ako nagsabi niyan, di ba? Ano sabi? Will a man rob God na nakawang ba ng tao ang Diyos? Yan o, oh, napakalinaw. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? Yet ye have robbed me. Ninakawan mo ako eh. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? Kita mo ang tigas ng ulo. <laughs> Di ba? Ang sabi, ng, ang sabi, nanakawan ba ng tao ang Diyos? Oo. Ninakawan niyo ako. Saan, Panginoon? Ang sabi ng Panginoon? Ang sabi ng Panginoon? In tithes. And what? Offering. Kaya pag hindi nabibigay ng tithe and offering, ano ka? Magnanakaw ka. No, ano naman niyo ba yan? Magnanakaw ka. Magnanakaw ka, magnanakaw ka, magnanakaw ka din, kayo, magnanakaw kayo, magnanakaw kayo lahat! Yung nasa nasa nursery, yung nasa toddlers, yung nasa PA system, ang hindi nagbibigay ng tithes and offerings, magnanakaw ka. So ano ang resulta ng pagnanakaw? Ha? So gobyerno natin, kulong. Tama? Lawyers, kulong ba? Kulong. Ang penalty ng pagnanakaw. Depende kung makano ninakaw mo. Alright? Sa Panginoon, walang kulong. Wala rin impyerno. Ay, salamat. Salamat. Kahit ako magnanakaw, wala nang impyerno. Langit ka na nga, di pa? Kaya nga ang tigas ng ulo mo dahil langit na punta mo eh. Kaya nga matigas ang ulo mo dahil hindi nawawala yung kaligtasan mo kaya nung gabi mo eh. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Pero alam niyo, kung talagang ligtas ka, kung talagang binawa ka ng Panginoon, hindi magiging matigas ang ulo mo. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? So ano? Ang parusa. Verse number 9. Sabi nga na isang pastor, Ye are cursed with a curse. With emphasis. Ha? With emphasis. Ano yung emphasis? Ye are cursed with a curse. C-R-U-S-E-D. 
Ini spell pa eh. Oh, tignan niya ha. Sinumpa ka. Hindi a period yun, hindi. Sinumpa ka ng sumpa. Terrible. Double jeopardy yata yun ha. Sinumpa ka na, sumpa pa ang sumumpa sa'yo. You know what I'm saying, ha? Oo. Nakunawa niyo ba yun? Oo. Oo. Later on, sumpak ang matanggap mo. He have robbed me, even this whole nation. Tanong, tama ba yung sinasabi ko? Tama po ba? Tanong, may karapatan ba ako magsalata ng ganito? Oo. Oh. Oh. Kung nasa evangelical church ka, hindi ka makakain na ganyan ng mensahe. Alright. A minimum standard of giving in the New Testament. Legal requirement in the Old Testament. A minimum standard of giving in the New Testament. Oo. Sabi ko, it is the starting point of being blessed. Tithing, ha? It's the starting point of being blessed. Hebrews 7, 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And not giving of it is a great sin towards God. Kailan ka dapat magsimulang mag-type? Kailan? Nung natuto ka na mag-type o nung na-save ka? Ha? Nung na-save ka. Amen? Alright. Kung meron kang mga ninakaw na type mula nung na-save ka, ibalik mo. Ibalik mo unti-unti yan. Amen ba? Give it back. Why? It's not yours. Sa ating batas, pag nagnakaw ka, kulong ka na, ibabalik mo pa. Bakit? Hindi sa iyo yun eh. Nanakaw mo yun eh. Ganon din ang Panginoon. Am I right? Ibalik mo. Hindi, Pastor. Hindi ba pag humingi tayo ng tawad sa Kanya, nakalimutan niya na yun? <laughs> Oo. Oo, totoo yun. But nature will tell you that you suffer a consequence of it. No ano ba niyo ba ako? Oh, di ba? Napag-aralan niyo sa science yung cause and effect, di ba? Pag may cause, may effect. Am I right? Oh, hindi pastor, hindi naman. Pag may cost, may expense. Hindi cost pa pero kausapan cost. C-A-U-S-E. Hindi so S-T. C-O-S-T. Okay? Cause and effect. Alright. Ayan, tinan nyo ha. Ito, pag-aralan natin. Tighting pa tayo ha. Gusto kong i-refer kayo sa isang statistics na ginawa sa Amerika. Ni Barna. Barna is a very popular statistician among the evangelicals in the States. Staggering facts to ponder upon. A recent study by researcher Barna found that only 3% of Christians dies. In the States, huh? <laughs> yeah, only 3% of the Christian's ties in the States. A decrease from 8% in 2001. In 2001, it's 8%. Ito, I think this is 2000, 2005. 
It's now 3%. 2008, de, hindi pa to. Una to eh. Alright? Contributions by church members. 20% of church members give 80% of the money contributed to their church. Huh? For example, ito yung church na ito. Yung 80% lahat ng ginagasta sa church na ito, 20% lang ang nabigay. The state yan, huh? 30% give the other 20%. 50% of church members give nothing to their church. 50%. Now, let's look at the 2008 study showing trends in tithing and donating. Tithing in 2007 whether they believe in the principle of tithing or not, few Americans give away that much money in 2007. The research revealed that just 5% of adults tithe. Not surprisingly, some population groups were more likely than others to have given away at least 10% of their income. Among the most generous segments were evangelicals, 24% of whom tithe. Conservatives, 12% people, 12% 12, 12%, okay? Ano yung conservative? Yung fundamentalist. Uh -oh. People who had prayed, read the Bible, and attended a church service during the past week, 12%. Charismatic or Pentecostal Christians, 11%. And registered Republicans, 10%. So, I Republicans. Walang Democrats. Diba? Oh, Tinan mo, ha? Several groups also stood out as highly unlikely, highly unlikely to tithe. Several groups. People under the age of 25. They are unlikely to tithe. Ano yung sabihin nun? Hindi sila nagtatithe. Atheists and agnostics. Oh, kaya bang hindi ka nagtatithe, kasama ka sa atheists and agnostics. Ano yung atheists? Ano yung atheists? Ha? Yung hindi naniniwala sa Diyos. Ano yung agnostic? yung hindi alam kung may Diyos. Hindi nagtatayit yun. Kasama siguro ikaw doon, di ba? Single adults who have never been married. Liberals and downscale adults. I don't understand what downscale adults is anyway. 1% or less of the people in each of those segments tithed in 2007. Among all born-again adults, 9% contributed one-tenth or more of their income. 9%. The study also showed that Protestants were four times as likely to tithe as were Catholics. 8% for Protestants, 2% for Catholics. Okay, since the 2000, tithing since 2000. The percentage of adults who tithe has stayed constant since the turn of the decade, falling in the 5% to 7% range. The Barna Tracking reported that the proportion of adults who tithe was 7% in 2008 and 2005, 5% in 2004, in 2003, 6% in 2002, and 5% in 2001. Evangelical Christians 
distinguished themselves in their generosity. Ayan niyo ah. Evangelical Christians distinguished themselves in their generosity. More than four out of five gave at least $1,000 to churches and non-profit entities during 2007, which is 83% of the evangelicals. Far surpassing the levels reached by any other population segment studied. In all one quarter of the people who gave any money to religious centers, 25% donated at least 1,000. A whopping 96% of evangelicals gave money to a church in 2007. 81% of them donated at least $1,000 in their churches. At least $1,000. Tanong, magkano ba ang minimum wage sa Amerika ngayon? It is $12 per hour. Maybe it's about two years ago, I don't know. Meron mo nakakalam? Alright. Ito, sabi dito, Christians give the most. Christians tend to be the most generous group of donors. Nakikinig kayo? Ha? Ah? Ah, hindi kayo mahilig sa statistics. Mahilig kayo sa comics. Isipin nyo na lang na nakikinig kayo sa telenovela ng Koreano. Kung hindi kayo mahilig sa ganito. Okay? Oh. Sino bang Koreano rito para makasama ko rito makausap? An examination of the three dominant subgroups within the Christian community showed that evangelicals, the 7% of the population who are most committed to the Christian faith, donated a mean of $4,260 to all non-profit entities in 2007. Non-evangelical born-again Christians who represent another 37% of the public donated a mean of 1,581. The other 42% of the Christian population who are aligned with the Christian church but are not born again donated a mean of $885, $600. Overall, the three segments of the Christian community average donations of $1,426. A year, ha? Hindi a month. Hindi a week. Born again, giving changes. Ito. Ang sabi ni George Barna, Born again adults, remain the most generous givers in a country acknowledged to be the most generous on the planet. Born again givers. Said the veteran researcher, but their donation decisions must be seen in the larger context of the changes occurring in a wide range of religious behaviors with millions of people shifting their allegiance to different forms of church experience and a more participatory society altering how people interact and serve others. Ibig sabihin, ano to? Kaya hindi pinapayagan ng mga banko, usually ang mga churches, to borrow money because the members move a lot. Okay? In America, ang mga evangelical Christians move when there is more convenience in a church. They do not transfer membership because of preaching. But they transfer membership 
because of benefits and convenience. Ngayon, pag nangyari yan, nawawala ngayon. Ang nawawala ng member, ang mga fundamentalists. Why? Because the fundamental Baptist preacher preached the Word of God without fear or favor. Ayon nila nun, most Christians in America don't want to, to be rebuked. Don't want to be told that they're stubborn. Most evangelical Christians in America ayaw nila ang pastor na matapang. Meron akong, meron akong kaibigan, 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 kaibigan. Alright? Oo. Sinabihan niya ako, many, iba na ang panahon ngayon, 20th, 20th, 20th century na, magbago ka na, huwag ka nang sumisigaw pa nagpipirs ka, huwag ka nang mag-rebuke, iba na ngayon ang trend. Sabi niya sa akin, saan siya nag Sa Crystal Cathedral. Alam niyo ba yan? Crystal Cathedral by Robert Schuller. Okay. Ano na ngayon yun? Robert Schuller had a financial mess. He had to leave the church and had to sell Crystal Cathedral to a Roman Catholic institution. So wala na. Saan yung naunawaan niyo ako Alright? Tithing lang yun. Eh, ang church natin, hindi lang tithing yun eh. Di ba? Sabi ko nga, tithing is law. Tithing is not grace. Are we living? Are we living in the age of the law? No. We're living in the age of grace, folks. Tithing is law. And we are giving the minimum, minimum requirement of what tithing is. Alright? But when you begin to give, you don't give your tithes alone. Why? While tithing is the starting point of blessing, it is not the starting point of giving because tithing is law. Ano ngayon ang starting point ng grace? Ang starting point ng giving? Increase. Increase. Ipapakita ko na naman sa inyo para magkita nyo. Paying envelope. Offering envelope. Bigyan mo ako. You have to understand. Especially kayong mga bago, at kung kayong mga hindi natututo kahit kailan. Alright. Oh, ano nakalagay dito? My tithe. 10% yon, di ba? No naman nyo? 10% yon. Pagkatapos ng tithe na yan, lahat yan, increase na. Love, faith, world, free will, community service, pastor's care, member share, aim offering, calamity disaster, others. Lahat yan, increase na. Depende sa pag-ibig mo sa church. At sa pastor mo. At sa ministry. Kung magkanong idadagdag mo sa giving mo after giving your tithe. Pero yung pastor ninyo, mula sa love offering hanggang dun sa others, more than 40% ang binibigay. Above my tithes. Naunawa niya? Kinakailangan mag-example ako eh. I cannot preach like this. Hindi ako example. I cannot be as passionate as I am right now if I have not learned to give. Naunawa niya ba ako? All right. Doon nagsisimula ang giving. Nagsisimula ka mabigay kapag nabigay ka ng love, faith, world, the free will, lahat. Noong araw, panahon ng father ko, meron lang love sa faith. Nag-preach yung tatay ko tungkol doon. Sabi niya, hindi lang dapat kami bigay ng tayo, kinakailang mabigay din kayo na love sa kanang faith. Meron kami member doon matanda na consistent siya magbigay ng isang daang piso. Sa tight niya, isang piso. 
Eh, narinig niya yung preaching. Nakonvict niya yun siya. Kaya the next week, sinabi niya, love offering, 25 pesos. Faith offering, 25 pesos. My tithe, 50 pesos. May dagdag ba? Nirealign lang. Sino yun? Ah, sabihin ko sino yun, ha? Yun sa may membro eh. Mansion ang bahay niya sa Nuan. Marami yang mga jeep na may-ari ng jeep. Jeep, public utility. Alright? Do you know what happened after so many years? Nasira lahat yung mga jeep niyan. Until such time, wala lang siyang jeep na mabiyahe. Pangalawa, nasunog yung bahay niya. Sunog yung mansion niya. Sabihin ko sa inyo, mga kapatid, ang sinabi ng isang pastor sa Ohio, ang sabi niya, alam mo lahat ng aking mga members, tithe eh. Lahat ng member ko. Oo, oh, sabi ng isang pastor, lahat? Oo. Oh, talaga? Oo. Oh. Oh. Either you give your tithe voluntarily, or God, take it away from you. Naunawaan niyo ba? Oo. Oh. So kayo, lahat kayo natatay din naman eh. Di ba? Ang marami sa inyo, you give your tithe really. Ang iba sa inyo, kinukuha ng Panginoon saan? Sa sakit? Sa lahat ng bagay? Because you're not given properly. So, ano yung pangalawang area ng giving? Ano? Increase. Pinaliwanan ko na sa inyo, di ba? Ano yung increase? Second Chronicles 31.5 And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance, abundance ha? The first fruits of corn, wine, and oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field. And the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. Increase. Sinabi din natin, na kapag magiging literal tayo sa increase, ang ibig sabihin nito, yung unang sweldo mo. Yung unang increase mo. Yung unang gana mo sa negosyo mo. Sa Panginoon yan. Palaya kong sinasabi, eto, may pinalalangin ako. Walang trabaho yan ng isang taon. After one year, God gave him a job. So thankful and so blessed, God gave him a job. Sabi ko sa kanya, oh, yung unang sweldo mo sa Panginoon niya. Pastor, marami kong utang eh. Paano ko makakabahid ng utang kung bibigay ko yung unang sweldo ko sa Panginoon? Ano mo ang sagot ko sa kanya? Pambira ka. Nakatiis ka naman ng isang taong walang sweldo eh. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Nakatiis ka one year na walang sweldo. Ito isang buwan lang hindi ka makatiis. Eh di, itrato mo ang sarili mo, wala, pang, wala ka pang trabaho. Anong malay mo? Pag binigay mo yan, buong yan, ano mayayari? The Lord may bless you more in the next three to six months. Naunawaan niyo ba ako, mga kapatid? Yun ang increase. Di ba? Sinabi ko, para ko sasabi sa inyo, okay, okay. Oh. Ikaw, nung araw, nagtrabaho ka, ang trabaho mo, TM. Ano yung TM? Toilet manager. Ganyan yung imagine, ha? Katlumput limang taon kang toilet manager. The promote ka. Ginawa kang FM. Ano yun? Floor manager ka na. Oh, ang sweldo mo, 10,000. Tinaasan ng 15,000. Magkano yung increase? 5,000. Kaya yun yun? Sa Panginoon yun. Yun ang Bible. If you do that, the Lord will bless you more. Okay? Hmm. Pinaliwanan ko sa inyo. Kung ano na yan? I am going to explain to you first first later as we go along with our conference here. But then, the last giving is what? Sacrificial. Sa ating church, we have two sacrificial offerings. Seed of faith 
and our birthday present to my Lord. Sacrificial offering. Ano yung sacrificial offering? You know this. Yung tithe, 10%, you increase above the 10%, yung first fruit is abundance giving, 100% yung sacrificial is beyond your ability to give. Kaya sinasabi ko, for example, okay, ito yung allowance ko ng pagkain sa buong tatlong araw. Imbis na kumain ako, magpapasting ako, lahat tumataba na ako. Bibigay ko sa Panginoon. Yung allowance na ito. Yun ang sacrificial. Amen? Sinakripisyo mo ang perang pambili mo ng pagkain mo para lalo kang tumaba. <laughs> na hindi maganda sa kalusugan mo. Amen ba? Maraming parang to have a sacrificial offering. Oh. Alam nyo na yan. Folks, listen. Sa akin, dahil na pag-aralan ko mabigay, mula nung sampung piso pa lang ang support ko sa church na ito, hanggang ngayon, I thank God, hindi na ho mahalaga yung pera sa akin. What is important to me is giving to my God. Not on anything else. And God supplies all my needs. And even our wants, He supplies. Amen ba? Ang dami niyong wants eh. Ang dami niyong, ang dami niyong dyan mga bagay. Hindi mo naman kailangan eh. Pero meron ka eh. Am I right? Hindi mo naman kailangan na relos. Pero meron ka. Hindi ba? Pastor, kailangan ko. Hindi mo naman. Tapos, pagligo ng umaga, hindi ka naman tumitingin sa relos eh. Sa araw ka tumitingin eh. Makaka pa eh. Kung sa relos ka tumitingin, hindi ka malilay. Hindi mo kailangan ng lipstick. Bakit? Si Mary ba nung araw nagli-lipstick? Si Mary, nagli-lipstick? Hindi. Alam nga namang, uso na ng araw yung gumamela. <laughs> Di ba yung gumamela? Kailangan mo para bumula yung bibig mo? O labi mo? Okay? Pero nagli-lipstick ka. Hmm. Ang iba sa inyo, ang yaman nyo, meron kayong retainer. Pag tumawa ka, Hindi mo, hindi mo naman kailangan ng bling-bling. Di ba? Ano yung bling-bling? Bling-bling ba tawag doon? Ha? Oh, meron-meron ka. Marami kang hindi kailangan eh, na meron ka eh. Am I right? Hindi mo naman kailangan yun eh. Hindi mo naman kailangan ng asawa. <laughs> Ba't nasama yun? Okay. Marami kang kailangan. Mar marami kang bagay na meron kaya hindi mo naman kailangan eh. But the thing is, folks, listen. Sana, napakinggan nyo ito mensaheng ito. Sana pinakinggan ninyo. Bata ka man o malaki, mag mamaya magugulat kayo na ang pinakabatang giver, ang pinakabatang cheerful giver natin dito, wala pang 10 years old. Mas malaki pa ang binigay kaysa sa matanda. Even children can give. Amen? And if they have learned to give all they're young, it will not be hard for them to give more when they get old. And you know what? A cheerful giver is always happy. Cheerfully. Eh. Amen? I mean, look ah, wala pa ako nakakitang cheerful giver na mukhang daga. Ba't ko nasabi yun? Sa ibang churches, kapag napipisong giving yung pastor, 
Yung mga hindi givers, anong ginagawa sa upuan? Naku po yan, ah, ganyan. Naku po ganyan. Papers ng giving yung pastor eh. Sabi niya, hindi yung mukhang daga. Kumanyang ka sa akin. Sige, lapitan kita dyan. Kukuha ko ng trap ng daga. Iro mo. Nakita ko yun eh. Sabi ng mga pastor, naawa ako sa pastor eh. Pastor, ba't gano'n? Napipis ako ng giving sa church namin. May mga members ako, may pipis ako ganyan. Gabin sa akin yan. Wala mo kang daga eh, na giver. Amen ba? Cheerful givers, wala eh. Amen? Amen. Mukhang baboy meron, pero mukhang daga, wala eh. The, the Lord, listen here. The Lord has made this church an example of cheerful giving. This is now the trend we're getting into. Do you know why pastors come here? And you know how many pastors have come to our church since the time we have conferences? Huh? I would not doubt it if we have almost 4,000 pastors who have come to our conferences in those so many years. And you can go to many churches today and you're going to find 8 out of 10 churches have first fruits giving. Where they learn that? Where? Here. Here. Aren't you glad? And aren't you proud of your church, folks? How God has blessed this church in a wonderful way. Let's imagine we had 1.7 peso offering last Sunday and we're going to have about 2 million peso offering today. Just think of that. Because God's people pay to listen. And because God's people want to pay it forward. And because God's people would like to obey God. And because God's people want to humble themselves down. And most of it, God's people wants to be generous in their giving. Let's make that covenant with God tonight in 2014. If you have been giving, if you have been giving faithfully and cheerfully, praise God for you. I praise the Lord for you. I hope that you will ask the Lord, Lord, give me more passion for my giving. Give me more faith. I can give more. And to you who are not, you have your chance to redeem yourself. Be a cheerful giver. Starting tonight. Negative boys, I Let's all stand. Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. God spoke to your heart. I want you first of all to fill up the altar with God's people tonight. You fill up this altar first and nail down here. Either thanking God for every blessing or getting right with the Lord, or making a commitment to Him tonight to be a cheerful giver. You come first and be in God's altar tonight. Thank God for every blessing that comes your way. And the first and foremost and greatest blessing is what? Salvation. Thank you for my salvation.
We'll sing the cheerful giving song. The cheerful giving song, we'll sing that. This song was composed by my brother Ernest in dedication to the cheerful giving program I made. Let's learn it. Let's sing it. thank you enough you've been so good to us Father may we truly learn to give cheerfully Lord and to obey your word to humble ourselves to you Father to be thankful to everything that you've given to us and to be generous Lord thank you because you are God our Savior thank you dear God for Jesus For his sacrifice on Calvary's cross, we might be saved. May now bless the remaining activities tonight. I pray that you'd be the one to undertake and bless. Thank you, Heavenly Father, God, for everything that you've done. This we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.